So welcome to the session on reasoning ontology and uh, planning. So I will do a short introduction for the, the three talks of, of this morning. So uh, the, the talks will all be related to reasoning with, with logic. So we heard a lot of logic and, and this week and last week. So it's maybe more logic in plural because there's many different formalization, so it's really formal logic where you have the symbolic representation of thought, so it's something that we saw in many talks, but also rule to infer new knowledge um, from, from, uh, from the knowledge that we already have, we want to infer new things, we want to solve problems, and maybe also a specific thing about these talks is that uh, it's, it's, it, it's talk and, and in computer science, so we're interested also in large-scale problems. So you want to solve real-life problems. So you want to make inference, but in an efficient way, because you want to, to process large-scale data to really have uh, interesting outcomes that you can use in the real life. So um, maybe what, what the characteristic of, of, of logic, of formal logic, is, is that it has a long history and pretty well un understood aspects. So there's, there's a big background about theories, some sort of stability and knowledge about, about the field. And also the important thing is that there's inference methods. So you have in logic general inference method, and that opened the way to software implementation. So for application in computer science, what's important is that you have this theoretical background that you can use. So you have a formal representation of thought and it's quite well understood on the theoretical side and you have inference methods and these can be mechanized so they can be treated by software so that you can process uh, data on large amount of data. So um, we'll be speaking a lot about modeling also. So you have many different kinds of logic because, because you want to modelize different kinds of things. So sometimes it's more appropriate to have some representation than others. But what's interesting and important in modeling is the, f is the fact that you want to create a formal model of the world, uh, obviously a part of the world, so you're interested in something specific, you want to make a formal system of that. So you have different level of, of abstraction, so you don't want to have a complete model of everything that can happen, because that will be much too complicated, and in reality you're you're rarely interested in that, so you want to modelize interesting things, but you'll have a, a limited scope of what you want to do. So you'll have different level of abstraction, and when you're modeling, there's never a really bad, necessarily better modeling than another. It all depends what you want to model and what is the outcome that you want. And that's the important part, is that with, with logic, then you have, auto, you have the possibility of automated reasoning so that you can infer things in an automatic way with a computer. So you formalize something you're interested in. You want to have inference so that you can draw consequences, determine an answer, and you want to do that with software, with a computer, so in some sort of uh, automated way. Okay, in the first talk, uh, we will be speaking about uh, action and change. So we, we spoke here yesterday, there were some talks on, on, on agent, action, everything. And today it will be a bit different. So the agent is still the same thing. Agent is something like a process, a software, a robot. And it's facing an environment. And it must respond to this environment to fulfill some goal. So the question is that how the agent will pick the next action. Okay, and usually here in this case, it did pick many actions to fulfill its goal. So an example of that is like in, uh, in robotics, you have a robot, the robot has to go from this room to another room, so I have to find, um, find out a way to leaving this room, getting to the other, get inside the other, so to fulfill its goal, the, the task will be separated and many different actions. So, and, and obviously then, uh, these actions that will also change the environment, because if you have your robot going in the wrong direction, maybe he will get in a dead end. So he will be in a different environment. 
and, 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 and he will have to respond to that. Okay, or if you go outside, it starts raining, then this situation is different, he will have to revise to fulfill his goal. Okay, so uh, what uh, Sheila would speak about is uh, automatic plan planning. So the thing is you have an autonomous agent, so it could be a robot or any other kind of uh, agent, but must find a sequence of action to fulfill its goal and it must it must, uh, it, it must uh, obey to the constraint of the environment, okay? So in our talk, there will be some, some, uh, some relationship with formal representation, with logical representation, but also some sort of twist where you have that, as I said at the beginning, in logic you have many different level of abstraction, and when you get at automating things, then these different level of abstraction can also be used. So you have them when you're doing the representation, but you have them also when you're doing the processing. And you have, for, for instance, that, that quite efficient methods of inference today use the most simple logic, which is propositional logic. So as a formalism, it's not very complex. It's maybe not the best way to represent thing when you start from scratch, but as a processing tool, it has turned out to be a very efficient and important processing tool. Uh, today. Um, the, 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 the second and third uh, talks will we'll consider semantic web. So um, when it is the semantic web globally, so it's, we, I don't think we had any talk in, in the summer school up to now on this subject, it's a very important subject, is the fact that you, now you have a large data set of documents like, like you have on the web. So, you have all these documents and you want to exploit structure, you want to process these things. Okay, so if you, if you take the, the, the web at an intuitive level, then you, you have a vast amount of all kinds of documents and the intuition is that you should be able to tap into these resources to, to do something. Okay, and how can you do that? Okay, so up to now, maybe the major application of the web, you're, you're doing search by keywords and things like that, but you would, would like to do more than that, than to, to, to find more about the structure, relations, about the document, their content, their meaning. So an important thing is, is an ontology. So what is an ontology? So uh, broadly speaking, it's just a structured terminology, okay? <coughs> And what's it's important is that you have automatic reasoning capability. So ontologies of, are very much, uh, have a very, a, very, um, a very important relation with logic through description logic. So what is description logic? Description logic is a, a, an extension of model logic Okay, to represent ontology. So what are the basic cons? The basic uh, idea in description logic is that you have concepts and you have rule. So what is a concept? A concept it will be something like a room, a building, something like that. And the role or relation between concepts. So you could have the relation being in, so you have this room is in this building and things like that. So what, when you want to formalize a field, so with knowledge on something, then you have to define which are the basic concepts, which are the basic relation, okay? So it could be like people, people and companies, people are working in company, they're in a team, there's a team leader, things like that. If you want to represent these kinds of things. This is important for the semantic web because if you're able to formalize the field, you should be able to extract information and, and do something better than only keyword search and document, but find the structure and be able to infer things. So what is interesting, and, uh, interesting with the description logic on the practical view is that it's a formal system to represent concept and role, and it plays a very fundamental role in uh, the semantic web. Okay, so Jan, in the talk of Jan, uh, Jan will, will speak about logic-based semantic technology, so it's all based on description logic, so as I said before, it's, uh, it's an extension of model logic, so it builds really from the tradition of uh, formal logic, as I said in the first slide. And what is important is that efficient reasoning is really important. Uh, why? Why? Because we want to process large data sets of documents. So, when you look at the processing that's done with description logic, 
So the basic methods theme of logic, so it's methods that had been known for, for a long time. But it's clear that what's going on now, it's development of, of practical inference engines. So the principle of inference had been known for a long time. But when you want to come to inference engine, which is efficient enough to process large data set, then, then there's lots of on, uh, ongoing research on that. And Jan will speak about these things. So the thing that scalability is really important because you must be able to process large data sets and the data set will only get bigger and bigger. So it's really important to have performance. So we really have a need for performance, a need for new methods, new implementation, new methodology on how to process uh, description logic in an efficient way. Uh, in the last talk, pa Pascal would speak about uh, ontology modeling. So, if you come back to the idea of what is an ontology, what is useful for, it's useful so you can formalize a field. Like if you want to formalize things like a, a working group inside a company, so you'll speak about people, employees, you'll have a re relationship within people, people being in a team, somebody being the leader of the team, things like that. So now you have to, you have to realize these ontologies. So you have a real world uh, setting and you have to sit down and formalize these things. So this is what Pascal will speak about. So you have an engineering uh, you have an engineering aspect is that if you want to develop a real world ontology, it will be complex, it will take time, it will take some effort, and you must have best practice on how are you going to manage to do that to get at the end something which is really useful. So quality is important because you want a representation of the field which would be a good quality because you will use it to infer new knowledge. Then uh, Pascal will also speak about the impact on reasoning is that after that you'll, you'll process your information using this uh, formalization. So the formalization that you come up with will have also an impact on, on the reasoning and on the performance of reasoning. And uh, also finally, but that he had some, some real life examples Okay, so how do people really, in practice, uh, sit down, organize themselves, and, and define, define ontology for a uh, from a field? So if you come back to the beginning, it's not, uh, it's not that obvious, okay? Because you have to do some work to formalize the field so that you're able to uh, use inference method. So maybe to uh, wrap up the, 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 the thing is that, that when you take models, it, Modernization that come from tool from from logic, so so the so the um, the, the fundamental aspects are, are what is that you have in logic some stable theory and understanding of how you formulate things and how you process these things. But then on the practical side, you still have the question that you have to put up these formalization to relate them in practice. So, so this is still an ongoing field. Yeah, it's still a lot of work in doing that. And then you need efficient, efficient methodology to uh, process large data sets. And in all three uh, talks, there will be consideration about that, that you have a real world problem, you have a formalization, but now you want to solve the problem and for new things, and you want to be able to do that in an efficient way so that people can really use it in uh, the, the real life and then day-to-day -day practice. Okay, so, uh, thank you very much. I think that will be enough for the introduction. So I'm, I'm really pleased to introduce like, Sheila uh, McElroy that will speak about uh, reasoning to act from logic to uh, automatic uh, planning. Thank you. So.